The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody. Um, this is Emma from Exago BI. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, as always, I would like to start by just making sure that everyone can hear me and see my screen. Uh, you should see a title slide that says Exago Support Lab, Train the Trainer. Uh, if you could drop a Y or a yes into the questions pane and just let me know that I'm coming through okay, that would be great. Oh, great, thank you guys so much. It looks like we are coming through okay. Uh, so good morning, everyone. It's really nice to be here. Thank you guys again for hopping on with me. Um, now today we do have a little bit of a different kind of lab. Um, we're going to kind of break the fourth wall and talk a little bit about how we approach training sessions um, we've been speaking a lot with our clients, um, particularly those who have training programs or who would like to have training programs with their end users, and um, really focusing on the ones that maybe don't involve us yet, the ones that have uh, taken it upon themselves to create some sort of content or programs or you know, certifications um, with their clients. So we've really been collecting a lot of feedback on how folks are going about that and um, success that they've seen, what their, their uh, steps are there, and what, what sort of users they're really targeting with these sessions. Um, we've also taken some feedback from our client advisory board, and we're finding that a very um, common setup is to have an in-house Exago, quote, expert, who will then train their users to effectively consume our solution and get the most out of it. Um, with that understanding, um, or rather with the understanding that this is the approach that many of our clients are taking, we decided it might be appropriate to put out a bit of content geared towards training end users most effectively. We, we do quite a bit of um, Exago training ourselves, and oftentimes we will be um, going on site with our clients' clients or hosting uh, larger sessions remotely uh, with clients or um, all sorts of users of Exago. So, with that in mind, the target audience of this lab in particular is the folks who will ultimately be out there in the wild training other people to work with Exago most effectively. Um, we're going to be actually launching a mini series within the end user labs kicked off with this one uh, for the, just the next couple of months that are going to follow this theme. We'll do a focus on each designer uh, or major functionality in Exago, right? Things that um, folks come in contact with are not necessarily specific designers, but maybe they're often using a certain functionality, um, the formula editor, for, for instance. We're going to talk a lot about how to most effectively train your users on each component, as well as pitfalls to avoid and maybe tips and tricks to help move things in the right direction. For today's lab, as opposed to focusing on a specific designer or functionality, we're really going to take a step back, like I said, break that fourth wall, and talk about um, approaching trainings in general. How, what are the things that we need to be considering? What are the things we need to understand going into it? And um, what are the ways that we can really use the time that we have with our users, with the folks that we're training, um, and make sure that they leave feeling uh, capable feeling like the time was valuable, and ultimately feeling like they can go and do something in Exago, whatever the target uh, topic is, effectively and self-sufficiently. All right, um, so what's important before training? Um, there's a, a few key understandings that we as the trainers uh, need to make sure that we have before we enter a, a training arena. <laughs> uh, the first is understanding the data model. If we don't understand the data, we can't quite effectively convey um, to the users what it means to them and, and ultimately how they're interacting with it in the tool. We need to understand the use cases. And by this, I don't mean specific reports. I mean, what is the user actually going to do in Exago? What pieces are they going to interact with and how are they going to do that? Um, I'll explain a little bit what I mean about that in just a moment. We need to understand the user. There are different types of users, right? We all know this. There are business analysts who are working to create those complex uh, pseudo cross tabs and really getting nitty gritty with their linked reports and they understand uh, the data model. Maybe they just need a little bit of training on how to use Exago specifically. Then there's users on the other end of the spectrum that um, don't understand data, don't really want to. It's not something that they care to take time to dig into. Um, but they do still need to be able to use the tool 
um, the solution set to gain insight and get understanding based on that data, right? This is the whole reason that we, we use data. <laughs> it's why we create reports. So even folks without a key understanding of that database and the relationship and the structure and all that stuff that might make it a little bit easier to create these reports, they still need to be able to effectively get insights from um, the set of information we have in front of us. So we as trainers have the power to help them do that, but if we present it in the wrong way, it can um, we can really hurt ourselves before we even get started. I think it's important to start trainings and to enter trainings with the right understanding and the right approach. Otherwise, you'll lose folks before you even get through the first session. Um, finally, we need to understand the value for them. If a certain user uh, sees value in a single report or in an action or in understanding how to get from point A to point B, letting that be a part of this training session that we're running with them can really be the difference in um, a frustrating learning session and a really successful um, targeted approach. All right, so we're gonna take these bullet points one by one. Um, so understanding the data model is our first step here. Arguably most importantly, we need to understand the data model that we're working with and we need to understand it from the user's perspective. Training your own users gives you an inherent advantage in this regard because you know how they interact with the storage of the data. Maybe they're the very users that input the values um, that then make up our, our database and need to be reported on on the other side. Explaining that relationship can take a bit of the ambiguity out of the reporting. Um, we, we really find that data is the most difficult piece for trainers and trainees. Ultimately, if the trainer doesn't understand how the data relates to itself and um, how one table or one set of information relates to another, how can the trainees be expected to? This really means that the first step is a keen understanding on the part of the trainer of the data model from input. Um, really keep in mind that these users might be the ones building our data store from the front end. They might interact with the host application every day and make uh, clicks, actions, write things that ultimately store data to the database, and they might not understand that relationship. Um, we find that internally when we're training our users, uh, we bring it back to their world a lot. So if they are um, on the sales team, we will try to bring it back to using Salesforce data and using information that they work with every day and then can ultimately understand faster on the reporting side. Um, the other half of this is that learning what they're going to be consuming the most or what's a little bit familiar to them already can help put things in their perspective, put it in, in their world, right? Using lead and prospect data to train a sales team can really take the focus off of understanding the data by using something that already makes sense to them so that they can put all of their attention on learning the designers, the new components, um, Exago in this case. In addition to an understanding of this data model, keeping it simple, at least in the beginning, can help a lot as well. Um, if I focus on three out of 100 tables that I'm presenting to my users, and I'm trying to teach them how to build a, a simple express view with one level of grouping and a chart, maybe. If I work in the same two or three tables for the first couple sessions, uh, to make sure that we really wrap our heads around the designer and that trying to, to struggle through the data complexity is not taking away from that, we can then move on to other data objects once we've, uh, we've grasped the basics, but try not to start with a huge report that uses you know, five different tables and understanding those relationships and everything. Start small. Okay, um, the last thing I wanted to mention with regards to the data is that um, in the same, the same line of thinking, right, keeping things simple and, and only changing a few factors at once, so working with the same data and then introducing a new functionality or something like this. When we're working with ExpressView and advanced reports, uh, we can kind of lean on this as a method to uh, teach the differences between the designers. We know that grouping in ExpressView is very simple, right? We simply click the radial menu and swipe up. If we create a simple X by Y chart in ExpressView and then convert it to an advanced report, we can very easily see the sections. We can see how our grouping in ExpressView translated to the grid in advanced reports 
And this might allow me as an end user to feel more comfortable starting from an advanced report next time. I know what one group should look like. I know what my uh, target output structurally might uh, resemble. And it kind of gave me a starting place. Okay, um, so switching gears just a little bit, one thing that we've also learned in speaking with our clients, as well as conducting many trainings ourselves, uh, is that most users don't start from scratch in advanced reports. Now, this was very interesting to us because uh, at Exago, we, we tend to, those of us that use the tool frequently, tend to go through the wizard every day a billion times. <laughs> uh, we'll start with those advanced reports time and time again. But what we really are, are understanding is that and this might be one use case, right? A lot of clients that we've spoken to either give users canned templates to duplicate and make changes to, uh, add columns, et cetera, or they'll use upload, download to share report files and again, make small changes to them. Now, the, the takeaway point here is not that everyone uses Exago this way or that we shouldn't start from scratch anymore. Um, it's just that everyone's specific use case is very different. And the real takeaway point is that we need to make sure that when we're conducting trainings, we're doing, uh, showing, and teaching things that will make sense to that user base and will be relevant to their day-to-day. -day. Ultimately, it's not very helpful, even if they're cool functionalities, if we're teaching people about things that they're never going to need to use. That's not um, going to provide value to their day-to-day. -day. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, or perhaps worse, uh, overwhelm them with information that is way out of their wheelhouse, right? If they're only ever duplicating reports and adding a column, um, it's not very helpful if we're teaching them how to start from scratch and build that entire report again to then add the column. This is why understanding the use case is extremely important when training users. Uh, we at Exago come at this from just a bit of a disadvantage on trainings like labs. We're addressing a large audience that all uses Exago slightly differently. Um, so this is a bit of a different, a different territory for us. We tend to approach it, approach them all as individual. Um, we'll go for a specific use case and we'll try to make that clear coming into the lab. But when we're when we're conducting trainings one on one with a group of users who all has the same use cases, we have a bit of an advantage and we're able to really structure that content and tailor everything um, very specific to what the users will be interacting with in the day to day. And we see so much success in that format. Now, the next um, the next point ties in fairly closely with that one, and that's understanding the user. Right. We just spoke about it from a use case perspective but the user themselves can radically change our language, our goals in the session, and the speed that we go through uh, the content, right? And I don't necessarily mean, um, is someone used to this versus not used to this? Am I gonna fly through the content or am I going to go nice and slow? There are actually pieces of um, each session that you might alter your speed for based on the user that you're speaking to. This is a, a bit more complex than fast or slow. Perhaps our target audience for a particular training is a group of business analysts with a lot of experience in other BI tools and you know, reporting in general. This means that maybe through the section where I'm talking about data objects and having access to different fields and how the joins are configured on the back end, maybe I move a bit quicker through that piece since they're very, um, experienced in reporting. They, they have a data understanding. And then maybe I take a little bit more time in the grid-like interface because perhaps the solutions that they're used to working with don't work in a grid uh, the way the advanced designer does. So I need to spend a little bit more time um, padding that content, making sure that we're really going nice and slow and, and um, getting a, a success metric at each benchmark, right? We're making sure that everyone is at the same spot, everyone's keeping up and we really understand. On the flip side, maybe I'm working with a user who um, has some Excel experience, but really has only, that's about it. <laughs> They've not worked with uh, multiple tables and data that comes together in a reporting solution and really need a bit more time spent in the data explanation. What am I looking at? How did this get here? Um, where is it coming from, right? That really uh, is a great use case to bring it back to the data input in the host app all the way through to the output in Exago. 
um, our language might change as well. So if we're working with, um, again, a data savvy user, maybe saying things like tables or objects makes more sense to them. And using words like categories, um, which sometimes we have coined uh, the data objects on the front end as categories, that might confuse them. Well, isn't this just a table? Why am I, why am I calling this a category? Again, the vice, uh, uh, vice versa is also true. A user that doesn't understand data and really wants no part of it might benefit from language like categories. It's a little bit more friendly and it might make more sense to them. Categories of data. Okay, great, I can work with that. Um, the content itself, right? So the uh, ExpressView Designer is obviously a great starting place for a non-technical end user. This is the user that it was built for, for that matter. Uh, we have clients actually who only train their users to build reports by starting in ExpressView and then converting them to advanced reports. This is simply the process that they have outlined for their users to get from point A to point B. None of their users build reports from scratch in the advanced designer. Other users might be frustrated at this approach. We've uh, actually heard feedback from <laughs> other clients um, that said, why would you ever do that? It's so much faster. I know what I want. I know I want an advanced report. I'm going to go straight through the wizard, and I'm going to do all of my work in the grid. Um, this is how I'm comfortable. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to start with something that I'll then just have to convert to this. I'm going to start where I need to end up. Understanding which type of user, right? You can see the two that I just outlined are radically different and would be very frustrated to be trained in the same um, process. Maybe we're better off splitting our users, our, our trainees, into two different groups. If one group is going to stay in ExpressView and the other one wants a deep dive into um, some cool advanced formulas or nested groupings or pseudo cross tabs or something uh, equally complex like this. The last thing to keep in mind is. Um, the speed in general, right? I spoke about it in different sections, but overall, if we're just going too slow for some folks, they're going to get frustrated and sometimes just moving a little bit quicker or maybe letting them skip a portion of the training and come back in, um, do some work on their own. Things like this can really help us um, target an entire group of users if the uh, knowledge is all across the board. All right, now the last slide here, um, understanding the value is something that across the teams at Exago that have conducted training, we have seen um, as a very clear takeaway. Understanding the value to the user is so important. Is, is this user going to see value because they now understand how to upload a report? Maybe before they couldn't even get to that first step they didn't know how to upload a report file and start from anywhere, or they didn't know how to get into the advanced report designer. What is it that is going to make this session valuable for this user? And oftentimes, this is a report that's key to that user's day to day. We find that building towards a use case that people will actually need to do every day or you know, once a week, every time they come into Exago, however often that might be. Um, letting them leave the training session with a report that is completed or semi-completed or at least resembling the end goal that, that they were hoping to get to can help them leave even if they didn't quite understand everything or if they've got some homework or they've got more work to do. We've got more sessions. This was only our first one. That can really help them leave at least this session um, feeling fulfilled. They feel like it was meaningful and useful um, and they've accomplished a few things in addition to teaching the user to do something that they're going to need to do every day and bringing value in that way, they also leave with a report that they needed. So um, it helps the session to feel useful in a couple of different ways. The, the understanding is very important. And I would say that of all of the things that we mentioned here, understanding the data model and understanding the value are probably the two most important. Um, if you're able to, understanding the user that you're speaking to and their use cases is very important as well and certainly splitting users into groups where uh, these goals might align is going to help us be able to really take time and nurture each um, trainee as they enter Exago. But um, certainly that's a, a bit of a you know, best case scenario. <laughs> and we, we certainly understand that as well. Now, if you are, um, if this all sounds great and, and it's one of those, you know, we just don't have time to do this internally, you know, we'd love to help. We, we certainly have a lot of expertise here. Um, we've done a lot of training. So we do create one-on-one um, -on -one sessions with 
clients, with clients of clients, we would be happy to do a train the trainer one-on-one, -on -one, stuff like this. Just let us know. Um, this is a lab about what we do every day. <laughs> so we're happy to help. But we did feel that since so many clients are taking it upon themselves to create these, um, we have folks that even have series similar to the labs where they'll just touch in with their clients every month or a couple times a month. Um, we felt that since that was such a large use case, it seems to be becoming more popular. We, we want to help, um, help those trainers really understand the benefits that we've seen and some of the pitfalls that we've seen in our training experience. We would love feedback on this new idea. Um, I know that this is a bit of a different type of lab, um, definitely short and to the point. We're, we're going to be taking the next couple months to dive into specific trainers. What are some tips that we use to teach advanced reports, tips that we use to teach ExpressView effectively? Um, I'd love feedback. Let me know if there are thoughts about how this would be most effective for you. Um, let us know. Any feedback on other ideas that you'd like as well are always welcome. Um, I do have a couple other labs that I'm uh, cooking up for <laughs> the future. So um, maybe I'll, I'll mix some new ideas in or, or add to them based on feedback you guys give. We do look at the surveys. We really appreciate it. So um, certainly your thoughts are not wasted there. We read them every time. The next lab is in two weeks. Uh, it is going to be a technical lab. It's actually a pretty fun one. It uses extensibility uh, and a couple of action events in this one actually um, to grab data values from a report and then you know do something <laughs> with them where that something is up to whatever we can dream. So tune in for that one. It will be a lot of fun. Um, I'll hang out in case anybody has any thoughts or questions for a couple minutes, but I do wanna thank you all for joining me. Um, this one is a, a close to home lab, so we hope you enjoyed it.